Asian carp are one of the most detrimental invasive species to have entered into North American waterways in the last few decades. They are fierce competitors, rapid reproducers, and cause serious recreational and economic harm to waterways. In one project alone, it is estimated that $830 million US dollars will be spent to prevent their spread. In this video, we will cover the biology of Asian carp, their invasion, and what's being done to stop their spread. Hi everyone, welcome to Fish, Water, and Travel. On this channel, we cover topics related to freshwater fish, water science, and other recreational water-related topics. Just a quick editor's note, the phrase Asian carp is used to describe many different species found in North America that are invasive, such as grass carp, black carp, big head carp, and silver carp. During the making of this video, there is a name change for Asian carp to be referred to as invasive carp. This has been made by government officials. So from here on out, we're going to use the term invasive carp to describe, in this case, big head and silver carp. Before going further, let's describe the term aquatic invasive species. An invasive species is an organism that establishes itself outside of its native range and causes ecological and or economic harm to a new area. Aquatic invasive species are usually rapid spreaders, quick reproducers, and are able to outcompete native organisms for limiting resources. These traits typically allow invasive species to overtake an area, leading to a reduction in recreational fishing, recreational activities, or industrial activities. Other aquatic invasive species in North American freshwater ecosystems include zebra mussels, Eurasian roof, and curly leaf pondweed. Big head carp are named for their disproportionately large head, downward facing eyes, and molted gray colored scales. The keel or V-shaped belly on big heads do not extend to their throat, only to their midsection, which is a distinguishing factor when compared to silver carp. Silver carp have a similar body shape to big heads, but their scale color is more silvery, their head and mouth is slightly smaller, and their keel extends to their throat and is a very distinguishing feature. Big head and silver carp have pharyngeal teeth as well as gill rakers that are different from each other. These organs are internal, so using them is not necessarily useful to the average person. Big head and silver carp are native of China, Russia, Siberia, and some parts of the Koreas. The Yangtze, Amur, and Yellow Rivers are thought to be some of the original native habitats of invasive carp. Big head and silver carp are found in large river systems with moving water at depths of up to three meters or more. Areas with high amounts of phytoplankton and or zooplankton are needed for both species to survive. Invasive carp sometimes exist in ponds, lakes, and reservoirs, but flowing water is needed for successful spawning and reproduction. Mating generally occurs in April and June, coinciding with the heavy rains that occur in some East Asian areas. Mating occurs at the surface with the mixing of eggs and milt suspended in the water column. The then fertilized eggs are carried by the current and kept buoyant. Typically, invasive carp eggs that sink to the bottom do not hatch, so moving water is necessary at all times. Fertilized eggs will float to areas of slower moving water ideally. This is where eggs will hatch into larvae and eventually begin the carp's juvenile stage. Young big head carp are known to predate on zooplankton such as rotifers or copepods, but will also switch to phytoplankton if needed. Silver carp predate mainly on phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are small, typically photosynthetic organisms that make up the base of many freshwater ecosystems. Zooplankton are tiny organisms that feed on phytoplankton and also play a necessary role in a freshwater ecosystem's food chain. 
to feed, invasive carp will swim through the water column and pump filter river water through their gill rakers. These rakers sieve and trap food of certain sizes while smaller sized prey will pass through. The trap particles are then consumed. Reports of wild silver carp living to 10 to 15 years have been documented, and reports of bighead carp living for up to 16 years have also been documented. However, for both species, studies on their exact lifetime is limited. It is likely you have seen viral videos in the early 2000s of a massive number of invasive carp jumping and causing serious issues to boaters. Specifically, silver carp is the species that jumps. It is thought that jumping is a form of defense mechanism to protect themselves against predators. Jumping is triggered by vibrations in the water column. The vibrations of a boat motor, for example, can be felt by silver carp who become agitated to the point of jumping. It is entertaining to watch 50 pound fish jumping out of the water, but when they hit boaters and equipment, this can cause severe injury and damage. Invasive carp were brought to the United States to help with commercial aquaculture and wastewater management in the 1970s. The effectiveness of invasive carp at reducing phytoplankton biomass is questioned by some in the industry as carp cannot feed on all sizes of phytoplankton. But regardless, invasive carp were brought to the United States for the reason of pond management. Bighead and silver carp were eventually put into ponds within the Mississippi River Basin, and it is thought that a major flooding event led to their escape. Invasive carp are quite infested in the Mississippi, Missouri, and Illinois rivers. This has become a serious issue in the Illinois River, as it is a connection to the Great Lakes Basin, a region of major commercial and recreational fisheries. Big head and silver carp are effective filter feeders, feeding rapidly on zooplankton and phytoplankton. Because they are so effective, carp can outcompete other organisms for these prey items. As phytoplankton form the base of many freshwater food chains, their removal from a system will influence the food sources of zooplankton, smaller fish, and ultimately larger game fish. In this way, whole aquatic systems can be affected by invasive carp. Take the following example. This example shows a normal food web of a freshwater system. Phytoplankton on the bottom form the base of the food chain, which are then predated on by zooplankton, who are then eaten by small fish, who are then eaten by larger game fish. In this basic food web, the amount of phytoplankton will ultimately dictate the amount of food and population density of large fish as energy will work its way up through the food chain. Let's now put in the introduction of silver carp into this food chain. Silver carp also feed on phytoplankton, and they sometimes do more efficiently than zooplankton within the freshwater ecosystem. This means that more phytoplankton biomass will be eaten by silver carp rather than zooplankton. This also means that less energy from phytoplankton will work its way up the food chain to smaller and then larger game fish. At this point in the invasion, the food web is disrupted, but both silver carp and zooplankton are competing for phytoplankton in the system. Let's fast forward a few years. By this time, silver carp has had a chance to spawn a number of times and their populations have tripled. More carp in this system means more mouths to feed, and the majority of phytoplankton will then go to silver carp. In this case, zooplankton are being outcompeted and their populations have been reduced. Because their populations have been reduced, this also means there are less zooplankton for smaller fish to predate on. Likewise, smaller fish being limited will also reduce the amount of large fish and the prey that they can eat. Overall, if this occurs, large fish will ultimately die off or move out of the area in search of other prey items.
Now that invasive carp are in major river systems in the U.S. and beyond, it raises the question of how to get rid of them or stop their spread. Researchers are looking into a number of methods to prevent the spread of invasive species. In this video, we're going to cover the most popular methods to prevent the spread of invasive carp. This will be a very brief overview, however, of four methods for the sake of clarity as whole videos could be made on each of these tactics individually. The first method being researched is electric barriers. Electric barriers provide a field of electricity across a stretch of river to prevent the spread of invasive species up a waterway. Studies have found that invasive carp can perceive electric currents and actively avoid the area. Fish in the electric current will be shocked, further increasing deterrence. This method is currently used to prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species in the Chicago area waterway system, which is the direct connection between the Mississippi River and Great Lakes basins. Sound barriers are being researched to prevent the spread of invasive species, much like electric deterrence. Underwater speakers placed on a stretch of river would produce noise to actively deter species away from the area. This technology works against invasive carp as they have swim bladders which amplify acoustic sounds. This means they can sometimes hear and react to sounds better than other native fish species. In theory, sound barriers would prevent invasive carp from moving upstream in many areas. Another method being researched are bubble and CO2 curtain barriers. Underwater curtains of air or CO2 would stop fish from moving upstream, but would allow boat commerce to still move. If CO2 levels were above what invasive carp could tolerate, they would perceive this and avoid the area. The last method being researched is the full shutdown of lock and dam systems to prevent upstream migration of aquatic invasive species. Full lock closures to prevent the spread of invasive species may sound like an extreme prevention method, but it has happened historically. For example, the upper St. Anthony Fall lock and dam system in Minnesota was closed in part to prevent the spread of, of invasive species further up the Mississippi River. Theoretically, the best method to prevent the spread of invasive species is to physically block their movement, in which a full lock and dam closure would do this. However, this prevents the movement of other native species as well as boat commerce in the area, so the pros and cons of this method must be weighed heavily. Invasive carp are perfectly edible and have been consumed even raised for human consumption in Asian countries for thousands of years. Commercial companies and chefs have been working on advertising the consumption of invasive carp in American markets with limited commercial success. Despite this, chefs are working to change public opinion, even rebranding this fish as Kentucky silver carp or Kentucky tuna. More substantial commercial invasive carp fisheries do exist in the Illinois and Missouri rivers. Invasive carp are consumed in ethnic U.S. markets and commercial operations can sustain these demands. Some operations have also transported carp to Asian countries for consumption. Lastly, commercial operations have also been performed to convert carp meat into pet food. So, opportunities do exist for commercial removal of invasive carp out of U.S. waterways. You can also fish for invasive carp. Some methods for fishing invasive carp include snagging, netting, and bow fishing. Be sure to check with your local regulations before using these tactics. The invasive carp invasion into North American waterways is a serious issue. And hopefully, by watching this video, you now know a little bit more about this problem. Researchers are looking into ways to prevent the spread of invasive carp further and will hopefully find effective preventative solutions. In the meantime, watch out for flying fish and practice methods to reduce the transport of invasive carp and all other aquatic invasive species. Hey, thanks for watching this video. We hope you found it valuable. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. Or you can also visit us at fishwaterandtravel.com.